This is the EVA MCS magnetic coated system and this will be a full disassembly video um, taking the plug out and explaining um, the, the three common pitfalls that happen when you're pulling them out and what to check for. So um, at the very back of the plug in the center um, in the case of the Euro configuration on the bottom there will be a ball bearing uh, with a driver pin and that you'll have to press down to allow the, the plug to rotate or to sorry to pull out. If as you're checking that if the plug still does not pull out you have uh, two other options that may be happening. One is one of the four pins is getting caught at the very back of the plug or if we take a look at another plug it would be um, in this region, one of the, as the four pins are up, oriented up here, with the fourth being in the ball bearing slot, the uh, pins will get caught in this area. So what you can do is you can reach your pin, your pick back, and obviously you can press on the ball bearing, or you can keep going and press on these two positions back here with a, a deep hook or so. Um, so those will free them up and allow the core to keep going. The third option is that your core um, actually twisted some amount um, and there's various intervals where it's allowed to do that um, and if it is not you know perfectly straight in line with the pins it won't pull outwards so if you find yourself checking those two and nothing is is pressing uh, go ahead and give the core a wiggle and see if you can pull it out and um, it should keep coming. So now we'll get right into uh, full disassembly. Um, we got the theory behind us so what we're going to do is hit the little ball at the bottom and you can see already our, our core start traveling forward. Um, so we're going to just keep going and we want to check those three points. The first one is the ball so we'll check and see if that needs depressing. If it does we'll get a bit of a movement. We'll go ahead and back and we'll check other pins that might be caught at the, the back of the core and if neither of those are a problem then we may just be oriented incorrectly um, from side to side. So you see a little bit of a twist gets it to come out so you keep doing those three generally in that order um, so the the ball that time got me a little bit more travel and that sharp click was uh, the fourth pin at the back coming out And at some point our, our ball bearing in the Euro configuration will fall out the bottom. Um, so you can try to put your thumb under it, hope for the best, or um, you know, do what you can. Try to hold in the sidebars if you can. Um, you know, all those are a bit fun to try to do all at once. I'm trying to also do this without covering too much of the lock so you can see what's going on. Um, but there, I believe. Now, we should have got it. So, just the last little bit, and now we're out. Um, so there goes our, our ball bearing down. And inside, you'll have, um, inside the core, let's see, you'll have three smaller pins like this that are um, they have a, a spring buried inside and they do not have a hole and then you will have one large pin at the back which controls the main ball bearing and that is this size and it's actually 
um, kind of drilled or milled out so the spring fits inside there. So you want to make sure you install this one at the last position when you go to reassemble the lock. And basically reassembling the lock is just the reverse. Um, I'll go ahead and show once I get the core all the way back in the, the one last step that sometimes you might need to take. So here we have the lock core apart and I've already disassembled one half but I'll show you on this half the operation and uh, how to take it apart. Um, I'll have a, another separate video on exactly um, what goes on with all these parts but uh, basically the procedure to, to take this apart will be um, first taking off this split ring at the back um, the split ring is basically um, just behind the sidebar there. And then after the split ring, you can take off the outer sidebar. Go ahead and put this guy back. So now that we got that, um, we'll just put this guy in a holder. So now you can uh, just lift the outer sidebar and it only has one pin at the very front as you can see uh, so you should be able to see there so we can set him aside and we'll go ahead and take this core out again and uh, the ring at the front which resets the sidebar so the sidebar reset ring we'll slide that guy off just a second. And then we, the only last piece will be the uh, plastic router ho uh, or uh, rotor housing. Um, actually, and then underneath that, uh, if we lift that away, is the sidebar, the inner sidebar. So once we lift that, we have now exposed. The, um, the actual rotors and at this point you could um, insert a key and check and see operation if you wanted to. So let's go ahead and just show that real quick. This is in a lot of ways probably the coolest part about having this lock apart is inserting the key and watching those guys dance. So again I'll have more operation videos or other things um, in different videos but for now this is just the disassembly. At this point if you did want to take these out you can um, just grab them with the tweezers and lift them um, and that's it. These, mine actually, you can see, have multiple gates. The first one has only one gate, two, three, and three, um, which just means it's part of a master keyed system. Other than that, the um, the sidebar, or the, sorry, the rotor cover, which I'll call this, or the sidebar blocker, this is a little bit tricky to take off. Um, what I did is, I actually used the um, the edge of a of a pocket knife and very carefully put it in between and just rocked it and lifted. Um, if you really dig at it or what, you can you can damage it. And um, I did slightly damage one of mine. However, I think a little bit of super glue will put it back. Just no problem. In fact, this is the damaged one. So. Um, probably can't see but at, on one side there's just that little uh, very thin plastic has has cracked slightly um, but what I did is I then um, since it's made to pressure fit in there pretty pretty hard um, I shaved the outside of it and sanded it a little bit and now I can set it in and take it out and it's just a, a nice fit um, the factory certainly doesn't intend for you to take this lock this far apart 
and they probably don't even intend for you to take it apart at all um, as the magnetic system is pretty pretty uh, resilient to um, dirt and debris there's not really much to catch on on the inside of the keyway so um, maintenance is probably very minimal and keys can only be made by the factory and our locks are made and set by the factory So when reassembling, you may notice that um, the last little bit gives you problems. So up until this point, it's pretty easy, pushing it back in, just doing exactly what we did before. But you might notice you have a problem pushing it all the way in. Um, so what I've found is that, well, you can just wiggle this guy back and forth and try to get it in place, which it happened to just do for me. Um, sometimes that does not work and so what you want to do is um, you want to check the rotation of your let me see if, make sure you can see this this um, split ring right here so this ring um, if it's just a little bit askew is not going to work. It needs to line up with the tip right there of the sidebar correctly. So once it lines up there, it will just uh, push back into place and you won't generally won't have to rock it around too much. Um, although you can try to just give it a little bit of a wiggle as it goes back and you can see it goes right in. So now it is in fact uh, locked up and you always want to verify function of your lock with the key um, as in some cases when you um, when you're reinstalling it if your little ball bearing does not go in the right place or it pops out um, you may be able to turn your key about that far or you may not be able to turn your key at all so depending on what's the problem um, the key will should tell you where the problem is so if it doesn't turn at all it's generally going to be your ball bearing or one of your other ball bearings um, although the passive ones generally shouldn't give you any problems if they do fall out uh, the active ball bearing would be what you're looking at and if you do drop into a false set uh, about that much then it generally means that you have some problem with your sidebar or the orientation of your rotors if you took those apart. So I hope that this has been helpful for people with MCSs that have decided to just keep them on a shelf and not disassemble them. Um, take them apart. There's not too much uh, that can go wrong with just pulling the plug out. Um, it's just one if you want to get a look at the rotors, that's when things can happen. So. Good luck.